there is one force on this planet that is constantly trying to manipulate, trick, and demotivate you so that you never finish your game. It knows all your weak spots, it knows every vulnerability that you have, and it is constantly trying to stop you 24 seven every single day. And that one thing, is you, or more specifically, it is your resistance. This is a really, really deep topic, and I'm gonna try my best not to go nuts here, but this is deep, so be prepared for that. A lot of you know what resistance is on the surface, because there are really obvious sides to what resistance is. When you wake up and you have this kind of whiny voice in your head that's like, I don't wanna work on my game today, right? That's obvious resistance. But even if that is not happening to you, I can still say with 100% confidence that every single person on this planet, rich, poor, young, old, doesn't matter. Every single person on the planet experiences resistance every single day. It just doesn't always take on the form of a whiny voice in your head. So I'm just gonna start by giving you a few examples of how resistance could be showing up in your life. And then we're gonna talk about where it comes from and what you can do about it. So again, if you're having trouble wanting to make your game, that's a very obvious form of resistance that you're gonna have to fight against. But let's say that's not the problem. You have a habit down. You are at your computer at the same exact time every single day and you're doing the work. That does not mean you're out of the woods here. If you're working on a game, then I have to assume that your end goal with it is to publish it on some platform for some amount of money. Anything at all that detracts you from that goal is resistance. And that includes things that you might not have thought about, like perfectionism. Hold on, what the f did I just say? Perfectionism in your work is a form of resistance. And hear me out here because I know a lot of developers take pride in their perfectionism in their work. But we're talking about art here, okay? So spending countless hours on one single particle system or redrawing that same sprite for the 17th time or adding another layer of complexity to your game when it's not needed could all be forms of resistance. You're a developer, so it's very important that you do put a lot of care and love into your project. But with each individual thing that you are creating in your game, there has to be a point where you say, that's good enough, and then you move on to the next thing. It's no different than a painter that's reworking that same tree over and over and over again, or an author getting caught in a never ending editing loop. And I really don't wanna give the wrong idea here because polish is very important. Reworking things is important. Making the best product that you can make is important. But there's a line. It might be reworking your character art over and over and over again. Maybe you're making the music for your game and you keep tweaking the same song again and again and again. Or with the actual programming of your game, you could become so obsessed with optimization and refactoring and creating the perfect system so much so that no actual progress ever actually gets made in your game. That happens to me constantly with the programming side. I really, really battle trying to make the perfect systems and actually particles as well. I can really get wrapped up in those for a long time. Let's talk about marketing next because there is a lot of room for resistance there because 99.9% .9 of developers really hate marketing. And guess what? Your resistance knows that you hate marketing and so it's going to fill your brain with all these delicious excuses for why you should not market your game right now, or to not take the marketing as seriously as you could. On a very fundamental level, you probably know how to market your game, at least on a basic level. There might be specific strategies or tactics that you could educate yourself on a little bit more, but at a core level, you know what to do. Get as many people as possible to watch your trailer or play your demo. So why do so few developers manage to do this successfully? And I promise you, it's not because there's some secret out there that you're missing. You could compile a massive list of streamers, both big and small, and email all of them or message them on Twitter or whatever and ask them to play your game. And you can research how to craft that request in a very compelling way and then implement. Very few indie developers do this. Why? It's because of resistance. Resistance is going to flood your brain with a thousand different reasons as to why you shouldn't do that or why it's pointless or why it won't work. We're going to talk about why soon, but we're not there just yet. Beginners or those of you who are thinking about starting game development. If if you've ever gone online and asked the question, what programming language should I start with? Or which engine should I use? And you've been going around and around for months, that can be a form of resistance as well. And that is literally keeping you from doing what you wanna be doing, which is learning how to make games. That's like if you're super interested in math and you go to a math professor and you ask which branch of math should you start with? Calculus or trig or statistics or whatever. The frustrating answer you're going to get from that mathematician is the same you're gonna get from a programmer, which is frustrating. They're gonna tell you, well, that depends. What's your end goal? Anything that prevents you from taking action that's going to get you closer to a goal that you have in life and it comes from your own mind, 
that is resistance. That's the best definition I can give you. Let's say you're young, you're in high school, or even earlier, whatever, and you have really strict parents. They won't let you have computer time until your homework is done. Well, that's not resistance, okay? Because that's an obstacle outside of yourself. But if you decide that you really hate homework and so you procrastinate your homework and you put that off, then that is resistance because now you've made a choice that's keeping you from doing what you wanna be doing, which is working on a game. Let's say you're trying to form really good habits and you're wanting to be on your computer at the exact same time every day, but you didn't do the best this week. You missed a couple of days and now it's Thursday. And so you get the thought, I'll just start fresh next week. That's resistance. It makes literally no sense to wait until next week to try to form better habits. But there's some weaselly little voice in there that's being a f that somehow convinces you to put your feet up and procrastinate until next week. This is not just for game developers, by the way. This is for anything. If you wanna start a business, if you want to go to the gym and lose weight, if you wanna eat healthier or take up a spiritual practice, or basically better yourself in any conceivable way in your life, resistance will be there being a f and this does not make you lazy and it does not mean you're broken. And it does not mean that there is something wrong with you. Remember we said at the beginning that every single person on the planet deals with this. So it just means that you're a person. There's a book that I've read before and I'm rereading it right now. It's called The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. And there's a really interesting quote from that book. The more important a call or action is to our soul's evolution, the more resistance we will feel towards pursuing it. And if you wanna hear more about the topic of resistance in much more detail, I would highly recommend that book. So I'll throw a link down in the description below. So you want to have a published game and be a successful developer, yet your own mind is actively betraying you and working against you. Why? The easiest way I can think to describe it is that we are all running on outdated software. It's 2023 and Windows 11 is available, but we're all running on Windows 95 or Windows 1.0 or DOS. And all I mean is your brain is hardwired to protect you from danger. Something happens that makes you feel scared and you react to the fear in self-protection by either running or fighting. That's a really smart design. That's how humans survived hundreds of thousands of years ago. The problem is your brain does not know the difference between a primal fear, meaning a life or death fear, versus an intellectual fear, which is a fear of, oh, I made a YouTube video and I posted it online and someone might be mean in the comments and make me feel rejected. Or in the case of game development, I don't actually want to publish my game because someone might give it a bad review and make me feel worthless. Your brain will access the power of your imagination and project forward into the future to create a scenario that you don't like, make you feel the feelings like you're actually there experiencing that thing, which makes you feel fear, which makes you resist it. So what can we do about it? Here's the bad news. There's literally nothing you can do to make the resistance go away. It will be there every moment of every day until you die. The good news is once this really clicks for you and you know it to your core, you'll be better at recognizing when you're in a state of resistance and you'll just be that much better at sitting your butt down and getting your work done, regardless of how you feel about it, even if it's marketing. You're gonna feel the resistance and yet you sit down and you do your work the essential work that's actually going to push you closer to your goal. That's all I got, guys. Let me know any insights or experiences or tips that you have around resistance. I'd love to hear about them down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. I want to give a very special thank you to all of our Hall of Fame patrons, Jakob Yondok, Christopher Nichols, Sandra Kessler, Fontaine Waite, Brainwaves to Binary, Couch, KB at Bird Tech Games, and Ian Oral, as well as our Early Access patrons, Ken Waite, Mason Crow, Mr. D, Jan, Liquid Egg, Alexander Prestes, Jude Greaves, Felipe Gomez dos Santos, Ober, Francesco Latamato, Bill Guo, Alone on Mars, Alex Friedman, Danny Rathliff, Arnon S. Schonevig, Neil, Ben Kerberger, John Wisman, Lucky Tales, Aiden Serve, Adarsh Kumar, Merler, and Anastasia Shamalina. If you choose to support us on Patreon, you can get early access to all of our YouTube videos, monthly alpha builds, and more.